Hello folks, this is Psychic Underlord from PsychicUnderlord.com coming at you with another video. Very excited to be able to present this uh, continuation of the darkness and light, the dichotomy of good and evil, uh, the concepts of heaven and hell, the yin and the yang, making sense of the reality we live in. Now here's another puzzle piece to put into your puzzle and I'm so gracious that we're here in the evolution of our website and in the evolution of our Etsy store and in the evolution of our YouTube to be able to present to you one of the most fantastic ideas that many people have talked about, but many have not been able to uh, discuss it or elaborate on it. The concept of naturally evil, and naturally good, People say, I don't want to give up on my son. He's done this, he's done that. I don't want to give up on my daughter. She's done this and done that. You don't have the power to adjust the supernatural aspects of a divine creation. The concept of someone being divine, someone being not divine, that's all uh, hearsay um, for you to assume that a living, breathing, upright, walking, talking, eating, dancing, break dancing, and uh, ordering Netflix, something out here on the earth is any less than divine because I don't see anything else in creation doing it except for us. So just, just. Let that, sick, let that soak in and uh, really think about it. Are there any other creatures on this planet that actually order Netflix or can order and place orders through Amazon or any of the other millions and millions of websites through the internet and to go into this little thing on their phone and be able to kind of adjust the settings so that we can get the Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth hooked up to all these other inanimate, inorganic things that we've created, all this architecture, all this technology. This is an act of the divine. Incarnate angels versus incarnate demons. Living in a world where we look at pictures that were painted long ago and say, well, that was the old way that it was. Those things are long gone. Those are things, the dragons that they show are uh, were once dinosaurs, but that's just an assumption that these things are rare now and that humanity has somehow technologically accomplished in nearly extincting, uh, I don't know if you know if that's a word, killing off the North American buffalo just so that the Native American Indians won't have food to eat and then we can drive them across the whole freaking country. That doesn't sound like something that bumblebees do. It doesn't sound like something that fire ants or any other predator, not even the lion, not even the bear. I could imagine pushing an entire uh, element of their own species to a different side of a whole continent just so that you can possess unbridled potential in a land that had nothing, no, nothing supernatural, but there was the supernatural idea that I want it and I take it. Could that be a supernatural demonic? The, the creator designed his own adversary. Let that soak into your skin. Which created a perfect system of righteousness. How could that be? How could it be that because I create my own enemy, that now the perfection of righteousness is perfected? That just goes all way over people's heads. They want someone to blame for problems. They want someone to blame, but they don't want it to be the creator. They don't want to believe that he would possibly harm a little hair on their head because I'm double-minded. So I have to have worship. And I have to have perspective in two different 
facets. I can't just live and live with something that the way it is. I, I can't just, I have to have straight and I have to have gay. I have to have woman. I have to have man. I have to have black. I have to have white. I have to have a uh, cheap car versus expensive car. I have to have luxury versus domestic, uh, conventional. I will have that synthetic versus regular motor oil for my car. I have to have all this concept of the back and forth to be able to make sense of what is and what isn't. But what if what is, is actually is and is and is. And within the is, is something called right and wrong. Now, making imperfect things into perfect is what the creator does. He uses evil in order to make good in the world. This is why the frustration many people will discover coming unto ritual is divining ritual and, and under the ascension especially, which is, this is the only store that actually offers this. I just, I don't know if that came up on the camera, but something was in the sky and literally just faded into the clouds and it was, I don't know how that's possible. But if something was imperfect, how do you refine it other than, I mean, you can't do it, but can the creator do it? He uses both sides. So you're saying that the creator prefers to continue the engagement and we don't just sit back and say we live in a free country. So it's all free without having someone out there saying to, to themselves, oh, it's free. So that means I don't have to pay and I can take it. So there are uh, in one word, in one phrase, infinite different ways of interpreting and then the interpreting triggers something inside of the the upright walking talking organism to be able to go out and put a gun to someone's head and say the house is mine you know even siblings you know to to fight over 1500 square feet when there's this so much space and so many places to go it's because i don't feel like it it's because I don't want to. It's because this is what I want. Because that is what I want. Because of all the things that come to the head of an upright, walking, talking angel or demon. So we're all a part of the puzzle of how righteousness is supposed to come forth, if you believe that. If you were able to stop the chaos, you would want to be paid for it. Because that seems like the only thing that's right for in exchange, if you were to solve a problem for you to be compensated for it. Could you imagine someone out there solving all the problems in the world or all the problems in your life and for you to just turn around and say, oh, thanks and just walk away. There's, there's no type of appeal to the righteousness or the justice of the situation and to say, is there any, how can I repay you? Those are words that you'll never hear out of the mouth of a demon. So this is why people end up feeling jilted. I end up feeling cheated. You lied to me. You stole from me. What is the, the concept, uh, the philosophical concept that this person has when it comes to good things compared to you? Could it be that one hand washes the other? And that somehow the engagement with you opens the door for them to wash their hands again. Would that keep you out of jail? Is that enough to keep you out of trouble to know that the trouble is sitting there right on the other side of town or right next door to you or right next door to your children while you're at work and your child is going over there so they can wash their hand on them one more time? What is right? What is wrong? You cannot stop it. These are the, for the refining of you. If you focus and concentrate on the, the reality that you are the piece that is being refined, maybe you can get closer to what is actually supposed to be happening here. So you are the creator's biggest concern 
which is why he gave you so many problems to deal with. You cannot get an authority without going through a blockage. So when the blockages come to you, you notice that they've reduced. I know that you have. Over the last few time, months or, or even coming on to years of you wearing ritual, you've noticed that there are things in your life that are no longer problems to you. They exist as problems for other people, but for you, no, they're not ex existing as problems. So there's a, been a blockages cleared, authorities gained. Those authorities are like lock boxes. No one can put their hand in it and take anything out of it because it's been secured. It's been secured by the ascension. So you're rising up in this thing where things you're still in this engagement uh, concept, but the things can't get you like they used to. They can't take advantage of you just like they used to. You can reduce blockages down to the end, but you'll still remain who you are. If you're on the side of this side or that side, I don't know who's in the store. I don't know who's in the shop. So I'm not going to discount what's before me. I'm just going to include everything so that we can all recognize that we may not be one or the other. We may be a mixture. And then when we come under authority, we may be under an authority and then have to go into the mixture as well. The way that he uses people, there's no limit to what he can do for you. There's no limit to what he can do against you. Recognizing the place where you sit is not a place to rest on your laurels. It's a place for you to know what's the next step to gain the, the next point of uh, idea to be able to make progress in the right way. How can you get that? The evil are blessed because they can only achieve unto a certain point. So even in their evil, you see them, oh, they're driving a nicer car than me. They're living in a nicer house than me, but it's only to a certain point before they go into the hospital for a freaking nervous breakdown. Let's talk about the blessings of the things that you avoid every day by being on the side of the ascension. They can only go to a certain point. And you know with the protection rituals, they can't touch you. The, the conquest is in your mind. The fact that they cannot physically assault you or take you, kidnap you, rape you, harm you. That's a blessing, but it's such a tender mercy that we think about it as just a day to day. A lot of people don't have a choice of being able to have protection on their lives. A lot of people live in a, in a very endangered way. They walk around the, the world with knives in their pockets and guns in their pockets. They've made people upset. They've made people mad. How hard is it to make somebody mad in 2024? It's pretty easy. You can take somebody's parking spot and they'll come and shoot you through the freaking window because they didn't get the parking spot or make someone mad at the drive through because they don't know how to, how to place an order. So all the patience that you've been able to receive, that's guidance. That is guidance over your life that you didn't go off and put yourself in a predicament because you know that you really do want to. The righteous are the willing. The willing ones are righteous. They must be blessed by a divine characteristic. Everything in their life is a miracle from the gods. And I'll say gods because I'm opening up an entire pantheon of all these different belief systems all under the ascension. So the righteous, they are pampered, but the process used to pamper them requires their patience. So before you get something, you have to be patient for it. 
Why, if I just go out there like other people, just take it and I'll have it today. Yeah, you wouldn't. You wouldn't be able to sleep at night either. And because everyone should be able to sleep at night, the ritual has decided that it's best for you to be able to sleep at night than for you to lose your mind over a freaking flat screen TV from Walmart taken out the back door and wondering when they're going to come to your house and get the TV from you. How stupid. You've got to understand there are two sides. The wicked are blessed. That's why I have no fear. They're blessed in their curse. And the righteous live on at the behest of things such as patience, anticipation, waiting for it. Wait, you don't say wait for it, wait for it, anticipate that it's coming. You don't have it now, but anticipate. And this is, these are the things that people call the difficulties. They're not difficult at all. It's not difficult for you to wait. Because in waiting, you can clear and gain authorities. Because everything you want to jump out and get something that wasn't for you, that would be a curse on you. And since you can't be cursed because of what you've done with this store, you must you must cooperate, even cooperate. You're saying I work in a and my supervisor is, is the witch, wicked witch from the West. <laughs> I'm cooperating with them. I'm cooperating so that I'm able to receive authorities. So you just sit there and just go through all these different emotional changes, not physical. They haven't fired you. They haven't reduced your pay. They haven't changed your hours. They haven't changed your job and made it so that you uh, can not function. It's all been in your mind. The whole thing with your marriage has been in your mind. The whole thing dealing with your sister-in-law and your brother-in-law has been in your freaking mind. But now you can't die from it because it, this thing has your nervous system. And you're saying, wow, I can't go and just pity myself the way I used to. Do you know the chemicals produced by the body in a sick mental state actually make you physically sick? Right? You have to know that. So by avoiding the inevitable of what you admit that you do to yourself. I admit that I, I participate in self-pity, wallowing in self-hatred and disgust, and sometimes even for hours. I can't even get happy even if you were to uh, put a marijuana into my hand. I couldn't even get happy if smoking weed. That's how miserable I am. And you live like this. And you think someone is supposed to have compassion for that. You have been protected. It's all in your mind. And so I'm talking to the ritual community, those who understand this. You've had to actually make peace with not being miserable anymore. The miracles are all like rabbit holes. So the, the concept is that to live forever, science has validated this so much. This is why people who are retired and people who don't work, many of them scramble to find, to find things to do. Because if they don't find things to do, what's going to happen? They're going to die. Death at the door. And after having lived a life where they have all those chemical malfunctions built in, those things that can make their brain just switch right to a place of manic depression and anger and rage and being able to be justified in their fighting and uh, disobedience and hatred and, and rudeness. And all those chemical malfunct mal malfunctions start going, they're scrambling for things to do to try to get happy outside of 
drugging themselves and out freaking themselves sexually to death. And you've got a ritual that protects your life. It's like a rabbit hole. You're going to keep going down the rabbit hole investigating because this is your spiritual life. It is not a product. This is the connection to bring you into divine union with the creator where all of the goodies are, all of the guidance, all the security. And you have to go through the ebbs and the flows just like the tide so you'll be able to understand when you get there to the highest plateaus what I'm actually supposed to be feeling, how I'm supposed to go through this stuff and be able to call myself righteous. This is a part, he's changing your taste buds. He's changing the way that you desire different things. To those of the demonic, let's just call them demonic because they're a different type of energy. But you're both made of the same substance. But we all have DNA, don't we? We all have memories encoded in us. We all have these muscle memories of all the things we've gone through and your parents pass everything that they've been on, been into uh, and experienced their entire life into you at the moment of conception. So what do you know? You taking on your parents' craziness. So that's why your kids are crazy because at the moment of your conception, you were acting autistic. So now you've got to have a child who is. Now, how do you not act autistic if it matters to you? If it actually mattered to you, you wouldn't be fighting it. You'd be working to try to understand it and how to figure it out. Instead, we take our problems and what do we do? We look for a freaking company that's going to solve it. I've solved it. Now you're going to be able to take the scaffolding and all of this hard, firm structure with inside of your system and inside your nervous system and to be able to pivot and to balance yourself on that to raise higher, to lift yourself up over the wall, because now you have something that actually can benefit you that won't just drop to the ground every five minutes like what we call everyday normal life, the disappointments, the frustrations, the things that they say are there, but they're not. This is not that. So the demonic, let's say everything that's adverse to you. They must bless the angelic. <laughs> Those people, in order for them to prosper, they have to find you and give you the money to prosper. How is that? So there will always be people coming behind you. We haven't even scratched the surface. So the resources over time are going to grow exponentially because the resources are being planted in people all over the world. And as they grow, this is a divine garden of miracles. This is the way, this is the way it had to be, according to what I've been told. You've seen this. You've been blessed by people who are wicked people and they're actually doing things that benefit you, which makes almost no sense. It makes perfect sense now that you know that that's the actual system and how it grows up out of the divine destiny control matrix. And it actually grows up through from the destiny control matrix and through the systems of the Masonic order, which comprise of all these different industries, all these different uh, concepts of daily life that people are living. So these are the things that are going to come through. Study it. So these are these are the places where I can be blessed technically, because these are these are the first places of distribution where the blessing comes through is the Masonic order. 
because this ascended ritual takes divine authority from the bottom to the top. There's no intermediaries in this. This is coming directly from me. So, and you know who I am. My rituals work both ways for both sides. That's why I want you to be satisfied. I know that you're probably a mixture of both. So it works both ways. And you as the ritual buyer, you are the ultimate priority. That's why I'm talking to you just like this, because you're both. Even if a person is mixed in realms, they live between dream and waking state. They live between a lucid state, a drugged state, an alcoholic, a sexual addict, a person who's a workaholic, a person who's a racist, a person who is mentally disturbed and wants to put rituals on other mentally disturbed people because they say that they want them to love them and to be there for them, even though we know that that's a disaster. There are a lot of problems in this world. There are a lot of things that don't wash in this world. But since it's prepared for both sides, there's a blessing over both. You should want to be clearer of what side you're on. That's why you should be seeking authorities in confrontation. Because that's going to get you clearly to your side. That's going to fix your nervous system, fix the way you're supposed to breathe, the way that you're supposed to, to eat, to drink, to process. All that stuff is built into these divining rituals. So you and others are essentially now that you understand this are the eternal default of evolution in the spirit as we move on and on. The people coming behind us will embody these same exact vestiges of reality. They will move forward. You will move forward. You will move up. They will move up. And the support multiplies. The provision multiplies. Thank you very much.